got a question emailed to me the other day from a customer who's doing a large voiceover project for Disney. And what they wanted to do is to do one long continuous dialogue recording and then be able to break apart different sections and rename the files. And there's two different approaches for this. And I figured I would take a, a quick minute to show you two different approaches. One could be using regions and the other could be using cycle markers. So let's take a look and you can find out which method may work best for you. So if you have uh, Nuendo 8 or Cubase 9, you can see uh, the ability to have the sample editor of the selected event at the bottom. Within the sample editor, there's a little function here, and, this, and it's the second icon in this little cluster of icons here that allows you to show regions. So I'm gonna select show regions. So let's say the default tool in the sample editor will be the range selection tool. So as I come here, let's just now and uh, this is zoom in here now and, and uh, let's say we have some dialogue and now, I, I wanted to just listen to this line of dialogue. So I'm just going to grab my range selection tool, let go. Now, one handy tip that a lot of people miss is if you have a selected range, you could just hit the alt plus now, space and, bar uh, this is, and that will play only now, that selected and, range uh, of is, audio. If I wanted to add this as a region, I can now click on the add region and give it a name. This doesn't turn it into a separate file yet, but it's just doing basic, telling now, it where said, to start and end so our I regions. In Victor Lane. So let's say we want to take this file now, and let's say we have this as our region. And I've actually created a keyboard shortcut to do the add region. and. It's not called add region. So if you go to your file menu to key commands under the audio family of key commands, you'll see event or range as region. Uh, I've assigned control option R uh, as the key command. So now I could again come here. Let's play I the region. I asked you a question then. That okay, let's assign it. The naming field is already active for you to enter in. And at this point, we could just do this kind of, uh, you know, play that region you again. Ready to answer, but I'm going to ask you that. Stop. Let's define the region. As I mentioned before, these are still just headers of where to start and stop within the one contiguous audio file. If we wanted to break those down, you could go to the media menu to the pool window. And then once you have regions on our audio file here, you could click this little triangle and now we could see all of our different regions. I'm going to select these. And then if we go to the audio menu, I could choose bounce selection. It'll, we could give a folder where we want the files to be saved to. And now we've created audio files uh, within the folder with the names that we've done from the region. So that's one method of doing it. Now, another method would be to use marker tracks. So if you wanted to kind of do the same concept with using our range selection tool, I could at this point come here and let's add a cycle marker. And then if you wanted to open up the markers, we could choose to name each of the markers like so. Now, Instead of having to do that, that could be a little awkward. We could also build a macro to speed up this process as well. So a macro can be a sequence of key commands or keyboard shortcuts. So we could actually build a macro by going to key commands and you'll see this little thing called show macros. So as soon as we do that, we have our macro field built here and then we could actually create a new macro and I'm just going to call cycle and name. Now at this point uh, we could just search for the macro to give it a keyboard shortcut. So I'll just type in cycle and name and what I could do is I'm just going to assign uh, alt Let's try command alt option C. So I've typed that key command in. Now I want to actually trigger this function with that key command. Now what I want to do is actually to assign key commands, uh, functions in the key command. So we can think of a macro as being 
a series, a sequence of keyboard shortcuts that will be executed in order. So, and if you're looking for particular functions, there's a search function for key commands here. So we see all of our key commands. And the first command I want is locators to selection. Uh, and then I'm gonna choose on add command. And the next thing I want to do is to, for it to insert the cycle marker based on that selection. So we'll insert our cycle marker here, search for that, and I'm gonna add that command. Uh, at this point, I want to go to, I want the marker dialog to be open. So we'll add that as a command. And then I want to, we'll navigate down. So a lot of these things we wanna cut off just very simple, repetitive motions. And this is what macros can really shine at. So I've right clicked here to make this always on top. So now when I select a region, I'm going to hit command option C and now it's automatically created our marker for us. So I could just type that in. Let's select a new range. And again, command option C, hit enter, type in the marker name. And again, we could just kind of do this repeatedly over and over again. So we'll select a new range. I'll execute the macro, hit enter, type in a name. So now we have cycle markers that have been defined within our project. Uh, and what we could do is when we choose to export, we could do our export audio mix down. Uh, we could choose a path that we want the files to go to. And then we're gonna actually change the naming scheme. So what we want to do is to have the marker name as our naming component. So when we come here, we could actually just say, we wanna have the cycle marker name and then hit okay. And then what we want to do is we could activate, and this is in the Cubase Pro 9 uh, version and higher Nuendo, you can export your cycle markers directly here and we could choose to import those into a pool into our audio track and at this point when we export they're going to be exported directly as separate audio files into the path that we've chosen and directly into our project window as well so now when we look we could see our individual audio files so you could break apart a contiguous audio file into name segments using regions or using the cycle markers, whatever method you find faster. So as you can see, kind of customizing these tasks in Cubase can make repetitive tasks go much, much quicker. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.